Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. When I think about what I am passionate about, the topic that is so near and dear to me, and in fact, was deeply inspired by Dr. Maté for me as a learner, is the topic of relationship. Very early in my career, and today is World Occupational Therapy Day, by the way, in my career as an occupational therapist, there was a class at university called the Therapeutic Use of Self. And I loved that class. But way back in the 80s was a, a kind of a fluffy concept, this idea that you could use your personality to inspire change uh, for another person. But in the decade of the brain, which began in the year 2000, a very incredible research study emerged that validated for me something that I intuitively and strongly believed, and that was the importance of relationship. So this very famous scientist, her name was Geraldine Dawson, she was studying the topic of depression. And she wanted to look at what happens in the brains of moms and newborns when they begin their journey of life together. And so she decided to look at brain imaging and brain waves in moms as they were delivering their baby and what happened when babies and moms first connect. Now you certainly wouldn't find me doing a brain EEG while I was delivering a baby, but these brave moms gave up their nervous systems for science. So wearing a little EEG cap, which is kind of like the hat you wear when you get your hair streaked, their brains were being evaluated and measured, looking at what's happening during this incredible process that we experience in our lives. Now there's a chemical that we have inside our brain and our body that is the best chemical that we enjoy, and it's called oxytocin. And it's better than any oxycontin you could ever do. Oxytocin is the chemistry of love. And when you deliver a baby, this chemical is very high in its intensity inside of the brain and the body. So mom's brain that is loaded with oxytocin, which is a good thing because you'd never have a second baby if you didn't have this oxytocin, enables her to focus her attention and sharpen her nervous system for a period of time after delivery to enable her to fall in love with this wrinkly little being that she just brought into the world. And this oxytocin shuts down some of the very primitive circuits in the brain in the area of the brain we call the limbic system so that survival brain can be inhibited for the loving brain to be the prominent function in that moment. So baby, whose brain is pretty flatliney at birth, they wanted to look at what was happening in there upon this first meeting. Well, there's a very important structure in our nervous system that sits behind the right eye, and it's called the right orbital frontal cortex. This is my favorite structure. And this part of the brain is filled with little satellite dishes that suck up oxytocin, receptor sites. And so mom's right orbital frontal cortex at this time of birth and delivery especially is filled with all of this activation. And it's likened to a red hot Christmas tree light bulb that is ignited under this condition of love. So with this intensity of the Christmas tree light bulb, within the first few seconds of meeting, baby's brain, that is limited in its activation, the right side of baby's brain lights up like a red hot Christmas tree light bulb. So these two beings who are falling in love with each other have a brain of circuits that are resonating. And this, to me, is the magic of connection. So in this activation 
of what I call gleaming and beaming. Mom's brain activates baby's brain. And this is the beginning of the development of relationship. Now, what's so important about this? Well, what I learned, especially from Dr. Maté, was that this right side of the brain is the senior executive of our cognition. And for me, this was the most validating piece of understanding that I could have as a therapist, that this senior executive of cognition is the part of our brain that is responsible for paying attention, that it has capacity for working memory, and is the senior executive of our impulse control. This part of your brain stops you from hitting your boss at a staff meeting when you are angry. It is the part of us that gives us impulse control. So what happens if mom and baby experience a disruption? Well, you know, every time I give this inspiring little piece of magic, people want to know, well, what happens if mom has a C-section? Or what happens if baby goes to the intensive care nursery? Or what happens if there is an adoption? Well, we now call the first 18 months to two years after birth the fourth trimester. Because your brain is so busy laying down DNA after birth that there is more cortical development in that two years after birth than there is while you are developing in utero. And so if you miss this first opportunity of falling in love, you have about mm, four to five million hits of gleaming and beaming every day in the context of relationship with caregivers who put their mind in your mind and allow the child to begin to see themselves in the eyes of the other. And through this experience of gleaming and beaming, the brain develops and cognition develops. Well, why is this important? Well, in our conversation in this conference, we're speaking about developmental trauma. And without the concept of blame or any kind of misunderstanding, all humans are doing the best they can with what they have. But when a caregiver or caregivers are unavailable, for whatever reason, to put their mind in the mind of the other, in the mind of the child, then that nutrition, that fertilizer for the brain that helps us develop that CEO of our brain is interrupted. When children are left unsoothed, when they are unable to find themselves in the eyes of their caregivers, then the brain is sacrificed in its developmental capacity. Dr. Maté just talked about the emptiness in the eyes and the high levels of stress responses. When you have this early developmental trauma that occurs in this context of interruptions in gleaming and beaming or due to circumstances that are outside the capacity of the child's experience, then what we see is a nervous system that loses its capacity to soothe itself and regulate itself in a, in a healthy and manageable way. And all the coping strategies fall into place to try and manage these attachment disruptions. So what I want to really deeply impress upon you is the possibility for change. Because when we speak about developmental trauma and this critical period of gleaming and beaming, it can be disheartening to think that early developmental trauma has such a long-lasting legacy of impact, not only on the individual, but generations to come. What we are now discovering more and more every day is the potential of the brain to change, and that the nervous system is what we call plastic or changeable. And, you know, Dr. Maté talked about this repair process. 
or the ability to alter the neuronal structure in your nervous system, even until you are no longer in that capacity to think, as in even individuals who experience Alzheimer's, continue to require relationships for self-regulation and modulation. In the context of a secure and healthy relationship, like a therapeutic relationship, the nervous system has the potential for change. And so what inspires me as a therapist is, yes, our brain is vulnerable to the context within which we develop, and it is also changeable within the context of which we experience our lives throughout our lives. So I'm hoping that you will remember that when you are present and available and tuned in, that not only are you in relationship, but your nervous system is gleaming and beaming with the person with whom you are sharing space, and that their nervous system is impacted by your state of being. And this is what I think of as healing. So I'm hopeful that our conversations throughout this workshop leave you with some inspiration and hopefulness as to the impact that we bring to the therapeutic process, not only from the way that we experience ourselves, but what it does to the structure of our brain, our genes, and our entire physiology. So thank you very much for having us as part of your conference, and I hope you continue to be inspired. <laughs>